your body's fat cells are not the only communal living for trauma and programs. Your programs, we, circular stories, are able to be found in any part of your body that exists. So this weight can be in your brain, obviously, and it can be in your cellular space. It can be in your fat cells. It can be in your organ tissues. It can be in your reproductive systems. It can be in your heart. It can be on in the three foot field. So as a human, you can't see it, but I got a force field, right? And it is a torus of energy that is streamed from my heart out here. And it kind of looks like this, right? So people are like, man, your aura is really cool. That's what they're saying. They see, okay? They're saying they see this, this energy that is usually a healthy person about three foot out. If you are, if you are very enlightened, it could be out, right? And this, this is your expression of character, right? Like this is like who I believe I am and all the things that make me who I am around in my field that I participate, but you can't see them. See, not everybody manifests weight inside their body. Okay. If I have a program that says weight, what I'm saying is, is I am heavy. What is heavy? I am density. What is density? I am unconscious. No one wants to hear that, right? So some of you are feeling like you're carrying the weight of the world. You have a lot of responsibilities and obligations, but your body does not carry physical representation of weight in your fat cell. It can carry energetic weight in your mind, you know, you're, you have a very heavy mind. You feel you're, some of your bones are very heavy. Some of this is stored in your organ tissues that gets very, very dense. Livers get dense. Kidneys get dense. Okay. The heaviness can be anywhere. Now, the interesting thing about a fat cell is that it really is like a pocket. Okay. And it is designed to, you know, it is designed to protect you, but it is also designed to store. It's kind of like mom's bag, right? And it's like, it's like Mary Poppins in there, right? So it can store. Now, because fat is like, let's say it's not a water, it's like an oil, then it likes to absorb toxins. So what is a toxin by energetic definition? A negative energy. That's it. So by nature, a negative, which means would be something that would be destructive, would be stored in mom's purse. Why? Well, toxins stored in mom's purse can't hurt you because it's in mom's purse. It's away from you. Okay. It's not interacting with your liver and your this and that because it's stored. So a lot of times the way your brain decided who you were at age seven and who it decided at, at you were at age seven is also partly decided by your genetics, your DNA, your backstory, your self image. Okay. So a body that was abused physically will do its best to create space from its enemy. So when I said in our little introduction video the other day that, that you're um, constantly working to create security for yourselves, weight is not always a level of just genetics. Like my mom was overweight, my dad was overweight. It's not about that. It's about protection, okay? 20 pounds is stress-induced weight. 40, 60 higher is trauma of a body being violated. Very important. I've been doing trauma work and it's textbook. So if I have 40 to 60 to 70 pounds, okay, 
my brain decided that I was too attractive, beautiful. And, and this is, this is how scientific it is. And it was like, well, well, I was abused and never wait. So if your abuser or something outside of you hurt you because you felt small, right. Or felt too pretty. Like maybe your abuser said you're pretty. I couldn't help myself. Your brain says I must protect myself. What do you think you're going to do? You're going to create something that doesn't appear as beautiful. You're going to appear something that feels heavier to protect yourself. You're going to create a body that can protect you. Okay. Now let's say you were abused and your body needed you to be fast and run away. Like I need to run away. See, some of us are like, I need to hide. And some of us need to run away, fight or flight, freeze. Okay. So what our bodies will do, our brain will say, okay, in order for me to survive, I'm being abused. And it could be, you know, my brother keeps getting the red cup and I wanted the red cup, which means that she doesn't love me. Maybe if I get louder or bigger, she will see me because my brother's loud and he's always yelling. So he gets the cup. Maybe if I get bigger, right? Maybe I'll get the red cup. Or maybe if I have an opportunity to eat a lot right now, then I will feel satisfied because I'm starving. Could be for attention. The brain does not know. Remember, the brain is autistic. So the brain does not know what's, what you're starving from. It just, I'm starving. I'm starving. And you're looking around. Well, I don't have attention, so I can't feed myself there. I don't have security, so I can't feed myself there. Food, great. Now, the brain will use the unconscious bloodline genetics to decide what it has at its disposal to create a protection and a weapon for you. Very important. We call this the victim and perpetrator. Okay. Now the brain will go, okay, I need protection and I, I need to create, uh, you know, protection and I need to be able to defend myself in the wild. Right. So, it, and it's not looking at like, you know, putting a suit of armor on you. Maybe it's putting a loud mouth on you. Maybe it's putting a big body on you. Maybe it's putting an illness on you because this is the way that you are getting attention. Maybe it's putting a, um, you know, something on you like you're really good in school like whatever gets you attention right and whatever gets you out of danger is the genetics that you're going to pull from to build your identity by age seven sucks right it's like oh, this isn't what i ordered so now because of law of attraction and the brain and all of these automatic programs that we've created that that perceiver of you that is now streaming a light of consciousness, which is your super consciousness, the light, it is blasting the movie film onto the screen and you are interacting with it like virtual reality. So if you wore the goggles, you're like, whoa, this is real. And you're even having gut checks and you're having ducks and you're having danger feelings and nothing's there. This is actually what's happening. I know it's like really bust your bubble that you're, that you're not real, but you aren't, but you are because your experience of things is real. All right. We'll get, that's another workshop by the way. But again, we're here. 